Welcome to another week of Table Talk. I am excited to be here. We have a new face. We have Brian mm-hmm. Edmonds with us today and also David Beatty. Thank you for um, the invitation to the table. Yeah. Good to have you, Brian. Um, we'll just jump right into our first question. It's from Michael. And it's for you, David. Um, so in Luke, you had talked about how Jesus says that his justifying power is only for those who acknowledge their need for justification. How do we come to that acknowledgement? And is that the same as saying that Christ died only for those who are called by God? Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you for the question, Michael. Very good question. Um, first of all, I would say, how, how do we come to the awareness of our need? or Jesus' justifying work. And I would say that the awareness comes from the work of the Holy Spirit within. Jesus said when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. He also said an interesting thing in John uh, 6, chapter 44, no one can come to me unless the Father draws me. So um, this work of the Spirit prepares us to embrace be aware of our need. It's if the Holy Spirit turns mm-hmm. a great light on and we, we are become aware of our need. Mm-hmm. Um, is it the same thing as saying that Christ died only for those who are called by God? <clears throat> I think that's really a different question. Mm-hmm. But the verse that comes to mind is one where Jesus says also in John chapter 6, all the Father gives me will come to me. And he who comes to me I will not cast out. That leads into uh, a whole area that... Of, of that's a fairly deep theological issue, mm-hmm. but um, it's somewhat of a mystery, I think, the way the Holy Spirit works to prepare us. Mm-hmm. But the simple answer to the question is, He convicts us of sin. Mm-hmm. He convicts us. Mm-hmm. That would be my response. Well, a question for you guys now. Um, Dan and Lee understand conceptually that suffering brings about the ultimate hope of Christ in us, but they wonder, how would you advise those who are suffering to persevere. Mm-hmm. How can we rejoice in our suffering without minimizing the pain we feel? Mm-hmm. You want to start, Emily? Yeah. Um, I think that's a very real question. Very like, I want to apply the word to my real life um, because we do feel suffering. It's not that we just go through it and we are just stoic. And so I think... I would advise someone who's suffering to persevere not by um, not feeling, but by bringing those feelings to the Lord and Mm. by um, knowing and and trusting that even though my circumstances might say that God is not trustworthy, that he's not good, that he's not there, that his word says that he is, and so I can trust that. Mm. Um, I think it just, just pointing them to the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah being their their hope and their comforter and just reminding them who God is when their circumstances might say otherwise. Right. Yeah, that's a great response. Um, I would I would add to that that we have a lot of great examples found within Scripture specifically mm. as you're talking mm. about pointing them to um, that help us identify. Um, and I'm reminded of something you've often said in your sermons before, David, where when we face suffering, oftentimes it's our natural, maybe even human instinct to want to turn away from God and right. to, to run, to retreat. Like, God, you're supposed to be protecting me in this situation. You're supposed to be watching over me. You're supposed to... But that's actually not not always the case. Um, suffer. It's not a matter of if we're going to experience suffering and, mm-hmm. and trials and tribulations. It's a matter of when. Yeah. Um, and for people who've walked with the Lord for a while, they, they realize that and they know that. And um, I think that's why God has given us um, things like the Book of Lamentations, mm-hmm. where we see um, so many different ways where people have just cried out to God. Um, I'm reminded of uh, the, the one of my favorite, outside of Jesus, who was the ultimate um, example of knowing what it was like to suffer, mm-hmm. um, was Job. Um, yeah. was one of my favorite case studies in the Bible when it comes to this. Mm-hmm. Um, where he experienced some of the most <clears throat> difficult circumstances on that, that we could imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, in Job chapter 42, verse 12, it says that Job's latter half of his life, life was blessed more than the first. Mm-hmm. And I think that's because of his obedience and his steadfastness to hold, to cling to God, and to not turn from him, but turn to him, mm-hmm. to cry out to God. You see a lot of human emotions in Job mm-hmm. where he cries out. And he, uh, David, King David, um, of course, did this as well in the Psalms. Mm-hmm. Um, great question. Uh, but I think that that's, that's 
ways that we can. Mm -hmm. Um, Specifically, Mm -hmm. just four quick things that I thought of. (laughs) Pray um, would be first. Count your blessings. Look for the silver lining um, that's there. What are ways that God has um, blessed me in the past, and how can I remember those? Find somebody to hold us up. Yeah, um, we all sure. we all need um, people in our lives that can come alongside us when we're really going through difficult seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moses had that with Aaron mm-hmm. and with her that mm-hmm. when he needed his arms to be held <laughs> up, and um, even serving, uh, getting involved with mm-hmm. the church or a local ministry can be a way to process those emotions and to help others in need mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. David, I know that you've done the Psalm Starter podcast for a while, and I just think of the Psalms as being a, um, the words that we often lack in our suffering that mm. speak to God um, about those human emotions mm. that we face. Yes. Um, so thinking about those human emotions that we feel in our suffering or even just in our plain mundane days, we don't always feel at peace. Um, so Jean was curious about the concept of peace with God versus the peace of God. Um, Brian, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and if you could describe the difference. Mm. It's a really great great question. Um, and I, I think that there is a, a difference between the two of those. And the peace that we have with God is our position mm. that we have with God and where we stand with Him. Um, that never changes dependent upon our circumstances or what we're going through, mm-hmm. our obedience or lack thereof. Mm-hmm. Um, and almost think of it as um, an example of, with, with my two children. Like if, if Journey or Jet were to get in a fight with each other, if they were to get in trouble at school and come home and I find out about this, uh, their, their position within our family unit, it does not change because, just because they've gotten into trouble or they've gotten into a fight or an mm-hmm. argument or anything like that. Um, that remains the same, same and it's a constant. Mm-hmm. But the peace that we have of God, um, that can be maybe what, we, what, what can ebb and flow. And I, maybe this is a weak example, but what I t- tend to think of is, is an ocean um, that's my happy place is going to the beach. And so um, I think of like uh, sometimes the, the ocean, as I look out at the water, it can be perfectly peaceful and maybe like a nice calm breeze. But when a storm is, is really um, at work out deep into the ocean, um, miles away, it can cause those waves to really come in and beat on the sand mm-hmm. and um, the, the current can move and uh, really sway. And I think that sometimes we can feel that um, mm-hmm. when we are going and experiencing pain when we're experiencing suffering, we might feel distant from God. Mm-hmm. We might feel um, like the peace of God has left us, but it never has. Uh, it just might be that we need to draw nearer to Him and lean in on what He's trying to teach us in those moments and asking Him to surround us and, and be there for us in our times of trouble. Mm-hmm. Mm. David, what do you think about that one? Well, no, I think you said it exactly right. I think our, our peace is um, settled relationally with God. We are in Christ, but we experience the peace of God differently at different times. Mm-hmm. Uh, peace is a fruit of the Spirit. Hopefully, it's we grow spiritually. We experience His peace and convey that peace to others more mm-hmm. and more mm-hmm. and more. So along with that, um, that was a big idea that you were sharing in your sermon, but what would you say is... The big idea. Mm. The big idea, I think, from that passage, and I, I hope came across, was simply, um, most simply, I'd say, the, the benefits of being justified. Mm-hmm. But I'd say it a little more broadly, that being justified affects our eternity, but mm-hmm. it also affects our lives now. Mm-hmm. We have good. peace with God relationally, but now, in this life, we have access, we rejoice in our sufferings, mm-hmm. we have a new perspective towards suffering and what can be accomplished mm-hmm. in our lives. So... Being justified affects our eternity, but also our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else that stood out to either of you? Um, I think kind of along with what you're saying, I remembered a, a quote from J.I. Packer's book, Knowing God, which we actually have in yeah. the Resource Center. Great, great book. Um, but he said, to be right with God the judge is a great thing, but to be loved and cared for by God the Father is mm-hmm. a greater And I think that those first couple chapters of Romans, we were really focusing on being right with God the judge. And now we're shifting more into what does it mean to be loved and cared for Mm -hmm. by God as our Father? Um, And so seeing that, um, seeing those like benefits that you were Mm -hmm. sharing, 
um, that we have access, that we can come to God, that we can know that he'll care for us, that we can know that um, he is using our suffering. Um, yeah, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, I also really enjoyed, um, and I, I'm a visual person, much like Andrew Wilde, I think it's talked about in the table talks before as well. And so uh, just the graphic of showing the succession of what, what ha- what's at work when um, we are leaning in on God, that it's producing something far more than mm-hmm. sometimes we can even really truly understand in those moments. Mm-hmm. Um, so I appreciated that, and it's a great... Um, I, David, I, I thought that that's a great point, that it's not just affecting our eternity, but now, and um, unfortunately, I know a number of people that are like, well, later in my life, I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll get right yeah. with God. You know, right, right. I'm going to live for right. me. Um, but we should really not delay in that. Yeah. And um, the, the justification is an important part of our process and our, you know, drawing near to God now. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, all right. For our last little bit of this, um, our gospel sharing minute, I had the privilege of sharing my testimony last week. And then two weeks ago, we had David Holcomb share. We, I think we said last week that we we're going to have you share this week, David. Um, so we just want to hear how did you come to faith? 60 seconds, right? 60 seconds. You, <laughs> right. you might actually keep it to 60 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Well, I grew up in a Christian home, mm-hmm. wonderful home. Um, but as I got into high school and headed off to college, I, I, though I'd been taken to church as a, a child and student, I felt like something was missing. There was mm-hmm. uncertainty in my relationship with God. Uh, there was guilt concerning sin and, you know, a, a feeling that maybe God was displeased with my life in many ways. And a friend one day in the undergraduate library in Chapel Hill mm-hmm. sat me down and shared with me the difference between believing intellectually in Jesus and actually knowing him mm-hmm. as the Lord of my life. That was a turning point for me. And since then, uh, well, it really began a relationship with God yeah. of closeness and love. And I guess the most wonderful thing was an assurance Mm -hmm. that if I died, I would go to heaven. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Well, it was a joy to be able to sit at the table with you all this week. Great to be with both of you. We always appreciate you watching online with us, and we would ask that you just keep those emails and questions coming in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.